Did you know that there are things that you could be doing right now to improve your chances of getting into medical school? In this video, I'm gonna talk you through some of the best things I think aspiring medical students should be doing from the comfort of their own homes to get themselves into medical school. Hey friends, my name is Connor Diblin. I'm a fourth year medical student at King's College London. This video is gonna be all about some of the best and free virtual work experience that aspiring medical students should be doing to improve their UCAS application to medical school in the UK. The national coronavirus pandemic that has taken over the world for the last 13 months has absolutely changed the face of applying to medical school. It used to be that to get into medical school, you're gonna need work experience with at least one doctor, normally for a period of at least a couple of weeks, and you're gonna to need to have volunteering experience and lots of these things in person to show that you've dedicated time and you've learned about the profession and you've gone above and beyond to find out whether this is the right profession for you. COVID has wrecked that. It's a real spanner in the works. This meant that it's almost impossible and really it's unsafe for aspiring medical students like yourself to be going into hospitals, to be going into GPs and getting that face-to-face in-person experience. But that doesn't mean you can't get these experiences somewhere else. And no, I don't mean pay thousands of pounds and fly off to Europe and go and do some odd work experience in a, in a European hospital. No, stay where you are, sitting on your bed, sitting at your desk, on your sofa, grab your laptop, and log on to these virtual work experiences. First up is something that I think every single applicant to medical school in the UK should be doing. I think this is kind of the minimum. This is the thing that everyone who's thinking of applying should do. Anything else is extra on top and shows that you've gone above and beyond. I am of course talking about the Brighton and Sussex Medical School virtual work experience. BSMS, which is Brighton and Sussex Medical School, have an amazing VR work experience that they've set up, which is free to access for anyone. Through the course, you're able to explore various professions, various specialities within medicine. You can look at various scenarios and various challenges that are faced by young doctors throughout their career. At the end, like any good work experience, you'll be awarded a certificate. This is something that you can use to prove that you have done this and that you can take with you and put in your portfolio. Remember, I'm gonna say this now, I'm gonna repeat it for every single one of these work experiences. It doesn't matter if you've done the work experience if you haven't reflected. Medical schools don't want you to have sat there, clicked through some slides, and then say that you've done some work experience. What you need to be doing is thinking while you're there. Put yourself in the moment, pretend that you are in a hospital when you just witnessed a doctor have this experience. What would you feel in that moment? And has that changed anything about what you thought about medicine? Have you now thought, oh, I was thinking that I was gonna go into this specialty, but now I'm thinking something else. Have you thought, Oh, wow, I, I never realized that being a junior doctor involves so much paperwork. Have you thought, wow, that doctor had fantastic communication skills? Or have you thought, wow, that doctor could not talk to human beings? What were they doing in hospital? The second item on this list is another great virtual work experience that everyone can be doing for free. Again, I think this is probably something that you should be doing regardless of whether you've managed to get in-person work experience. This is something you can do for free in your own time and if you're not doing it, I think people might question what were you doing otherwise. The second thing is the Royal College of GPs online work experience, which is called Observe GP. For lots of people, and medical students included, it can be very confusing about where the line is drawn between something that needs to be dealt with in primary care or secondary care. Lots of people watching this might not even know what those two things are. Primary care is the GP. Primary care is things that can be done in the community and it's done with the first doctor you might see. We then go on to secondary tertiary care, which is what takes place at a bigger hospital, where we have specialists and very specific things being done. Primary care is probably the most important part of medicine because primary care is where the vast majority of preventative medicine happens. Preventative medicine is where we're trying to prevent something worse happening or prevent a disease forming in the first place. And it is way cheaper, way more efficient for a national health service to be preventing disease and curing it. The Observe GP program has some awesome videos which really give you insight into what it's like to be sitting in on a GP surgery. They show you what general practice is, what is primary care. I would highly recommend this actually to anyone who's thinking of applying to a healthcare course. No, so not just medicine. If you're thinking about doing nursing, you may well then want to be a nurse in a GP center. And I think it's an awesome course that you can just watch, watch these videos, reflect, like you need to reflect on anything you're doing as you're applying to medicine. It doesn't matter if you've done the work experience if you haven't reflected. And you can use this to talk about your experiences in your personal statement. The third online program that I would recommend you start doing today is not a work experience, but it's an online course 
designed to teach you about what the NHS is and how the NHS works. This is a course by the King's Fund and is the NHS Explained. This is a four week part-time program which introduces and explains all of the intricacies of the NHS. Where does the money come from? Where do the people come from? How does it work? What is the hierarchy within different teams? Again, I think this is probably a prerequisite or should be a prerequisite for anyone applying to any healthcare course. If you want to do pharmacy or physiotherapy, have a look at this program and it will better explain what those different jobs are within the NHS. It doesn't matter if you've done the work experience if you haven't reflected. So there we have three courses that you can do online. All of them should take less than four weeks to do part-time on weekends and evenings. And in doing so, you can keep a reflective diary and you can build up that experience that otherwise you might have gained in a hospital or a GP in person. The next few things are things that I think anyone who's applying to medicine and thinking that they want to be helping out in the current pandemic could be doing. We're gonna be talking about virtual volunteering. So normally there is kind of an expectation that medical students will have done some sort of volunteering during their time at school. Now this might have taken the form of a Duke of Edinburgh award where for the Gold Award especially you need to be doing quite a lot of community volunteering it could have taken the form of maybe a part-time job or part-time volunteering you did for a while throughout your studies. Or what I did when I applied to medicine is that I had done some work, I'd done some paid work, but I also did volunteering on some children's camps where I looked after kids while we went out into the wilderness and you know learned those kind of life skills. Some of these things might not be appropriate for anyone who's under 16, so for some of these you need to be over 16 to apply for and always give them a call because sometimes you need to be over 18 as well if you're dealing with particularly confidential information. The first thing I'm talking about is the silver line. This is a confidential companionship phone line. It provides advice, information and checkup calls as well as some companionship to older adults throughout the UK. This time last year in March 2020 they had a massive recruitment drive but I suspect that they still will be looking for volunteers because people aren't able to commit a lot of their time. People are always going to be coming in and out of services like this so give them a call, check out their website below. Very similar to the silver line is re-engage. Re-Engage provides a very similar service to the Silver Line. There's actually quite a few of these. If you just go on the internet and you search companionship volunteering online, you'll find lots of ways that you can help out, particularly older adults in the UK who might be alone and very isolated during the lockdown. The last thing I would say about local volunteering is to go onto your local council, your local London borough or county website and have a look at their volunteering section because I know that almost every single London borough and every single county has a volunteering page on their website which will provide opportunities for people to volunteer in their local community. So this might be a fantastic opportunity to do something in person. It might be that you go and help deliver food to people in your area or it might be that you're able to do some remote virtual volunteering from the comfort of your own home but supporting your local community. On the note of preparing for medical school it's also never too early to start thinking about your UCAS application and your applicant exams to medical school. So remember for your UCAS application you're going to need to choose which medical schools you want to apply for and now is a great time to start looking at the different courses available at, in the different universities around the UK. Secondly you're going to have to have a personal statement for your application. The personal statement is one of the most important parts of the application. It's going to be where you sell yourself and you explain who you are and show some personality to these medical schools who have hundreds of people applying sometimes for the same place. If you want a bit of help with writing a personal statement you can check out this video or check out the blog post in the link below for some advice on starting and some advice on keeping a reflective diary while you're going through the virtual work experiences we've already spoken about today. It doesn't matter if you've done the work experience if you haven't reflected. And lastly you can start to think about those entrance exams. So remember that's the UCAT, the BMAT and the GAMSAT. The UCAT is going to be the one the vast majority of people are going to be taking. It's the most commonly used one in medical schools and it's used for both graduate and undergraduate courses. It's never too early to start looking at the UCAT. There are some awesome free question banks. You can check over to Pass Medicine who have a free six month trial of the UCAT question bank. So actually if you start now, you will be able to use that up until when you sit the exam in June. And there are some other paid ones, but you know, again, I, I never really advocate for a specific paid course. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, if you're an aspiring medical student looking to apply for medicine this year, remember to subscribe to this channel because there's gonna be so much information for you coming out for free in the next few months. Make sure you check out this video, which I've taken the time to specifically choose just for you.